This table shows the properties of the R134A HCFC refrigerant gas, which is used a lot in most cars, most cars in the, in the uh, since 2000. It is being phased out, but uh, it's still there, it's still available, um, and it's about a thousand times less damaging to the ozone layer than the old refrigerant used uh, before the HFCs became mandatory, the Montreal pro um, Protocol. So, uh, here we've got temperature, uh, this is the ambient temperature, that's the number of kilos of gas per cubic meter. Um, so, what we're going to do is We've got 20 degrees, I'll take 20 degrees, it's not much difference between 20 and 30, it's about 23 in here at the moment. So it's a uh, 0.2337 kilos per meter cubed. My Range Rover has got 0.8 uh, kilograms in it. So the volume at standard temperature uh, pressure, which is 100 kPa, well, 101 kPa is a typical atmospheric pressure, but they've got 100 here. So 100 is about one atmosphere. So the volume of gas in cubic meters is just this 0.8 divided by that. So, okay, so if you let the gas out of my um, Range Rover and let it boil up into a, a large bag plastic bag or something or a sack, it would um, occupy 3.42 meters, cubic meters of space. So from this, we can calculate the um, the leakage rate using the, the soapy bubble method. And I'll do that in a moment. I'll be right back. So a quick calculation about how long it would take for the bubbles to empty the gas in the uh, the coolant gas in the Range Rover. I've taken some of um, some assumptions here, some approximations which I'll just go through. We don't need that and we don't need that. So uh, yeah, Range Rover holds uh, 0.8 kilos, number of cubic meters at standard temperature and pressure which is like a one atmosphere at 20 degrees, actually zero I think, 20, 20 degrees. So that means that on an average day given the atmospheric pressure goes up and down you've got about uh, atmospheric pressure you could fill up a bag of about three and a half three point four cubic meters of gas imagine if it all leaked out and boiled dry it would expand and it would expand into that volume there in cubic meters so our bubble di diameter on our joint will be roughly about 10 millimeters uh, the spherical volume in cubic meters of the bubble is that which is that times 10 to the minus 7 which would be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7.005 uh, yeah that with the uh, point six zeros on that cubic meter so a very very small volume in cubic meters per bubble obviously we want to try and achieve a bubble rate of one every four seconds so if you have a bubble every four seconds it would take, um, and this is a straightforward calculation of the volume of the gas at uh, standard temperature divided by the volume of each bubble, and that gives you 6,537,821 bubbles to empty the system of gas. Assuming, actually, the bubbles will emerge, given the standard leak and a restriction of the gas system, I think the rate of decay of the flow is an inverse square law so in fact this I've assumed this is going to be linear so it is a real um, approximation but bear in mind if, if we've just filled the system up and it's at full pressure then this is the sort of leak that we'd be needing to detect to um, at the leakage rate we'd be able to we'll need to be able to detect to actually find the leak okay so even though it's an approximation of the heart life of the whole leak it is um, the sort of rate that it'll be leaking out to start with. Um, so bubbles on our joint aren't bursting when they're fully uh, formed into a full bubble size. They are, I estimate, about 65% of a, of a sphere. So this is another rough approximation. So uh, every time the part bubble bursts, it re re releases 65% of, of this volume of gas into the atmosphere. 
So the number of part bubbles, that's the bubbling out of our joint before they pop, is 10 million bubbles, roughly. 10, 10 million and 58,000 bubbles. And given a bubble rate second that we're aiming for, four seconds between each bubble bursting, then we're looking at um, 40,000 seconds to empty the system. That equates to 466 days, and that means 1.3 years before your system is completely emptied. So this um, is a real approximation, but it's better than nothing. Um, so if our detector can detect this size bubble leaking, popping every one every four seconds, the leak will verify, we'll make the leak first, use some soapy water, as suggested by my son, and then we'll remove the soapy water so we now know it's leaking. We'll use a device to try and measure the leak, or detect the leak, should I say, and at the end of the detection exercise, we'll put the soapy water on just to make sure it's still bubbling. And we'll see whether we can detect this leak, because this is a sort of leak I think I need to be able to detect with the system to fix the, the uh, Range Rover, which is the reason I bought that sensor, that gas detector in the first place. So, Okay, so I've contrived the leak at the end of this pipette at the sort of rate I think my Range Rover is leaking. You can see me talking, this gas, this jar is now full of gas, so it's detecting the waft of the top of this. Let me just empty that. There we are, very slow leak. Very slow leak indeed. So that's just touched off the, the water. Try again. It seems that once it's adjusted to the concentration of the gas, it seems to become less sensitive. So I'm guessing it's adapting to the ambient conditions and the ambient conditions might contain some CFC after you've polluted the air with the CFC to start with. So that could be the reason. So this it's picking it up now from somewhere. We're on sensitivity number three. Um, let's just try this again. It's leaking very slowly now. There's a rubber valve in the, it's a rubber grommet or something in the valve, and I think it it relaxes as you tighten the valve. The rubber expands and it cuts the leak off, so it's sl leaking more slowly. Let's make sure it's not the water that's doing it by doing it that way. No, it's not the wet pipette that's doing it. Yeah, so the conclusion is that it should be able to find the leak on my Range Rover. Quite impressed with that. So I'm somewhat um, uh, remotivated to uh, go off and have another sniff around and see if I can find out where it's leaking from. So the conclusion is, yeah, it should be sensitive enough. Thanks for watching.